Bob. I've been trying to prepare for this for a few weeks now, and um, I've had a hard time uh, trying to narrow down what it is I want to say to you. Uh, a lot has happened in uh, the time since you've been gone. I don't know if you've been able to watch it or not from your, your current seat, but um, uh, stuff that would really amuse you. I think that the, the Tea Party would have uh, amused you considerably. I mean, these are people that believe stuff. You know, they genuinely <laughs> believe things, um, which is always fun, right, to find anybody who actually believes something. Uh, and there were a, a lot of people around who just don't believe stuff, too. Um, but I guess they don't believe it so strongly that they uh, are believers as well. I mean, they're, they're people who, you know, think that the, the president of the United States was born in another country and that, that the whole thing is covered up. Um, and like important people who believe this, um, scarily important people. Um, and uh, it, it's just a, it's a strange time for that because um, the, the a lot of the sort of the libertarian ideas about where money comes from and who's control of what um, have really, you know, finally filtered into um, popular consciousness. You know, there's some uh, uh, sense out there that, we are living on a game board, you know, that we're living on a playing field with rules that we didn't write and that were written by, written by people who uh, don't have our interests at heart. And I, I think you'd see that as a, as a very, as a very healthy sign. You know, and there's this, um, this other movement or a post movement movement called, uh, Occupy where, uh, you know, people who, who care about that, people who see through some of these fictions, people who are uh, fed up with the, uh, with the narrative, the, the corporate-driven narrative of uh, uh, you know, human surrender to these, uh, you know, phantom operating systems and, and uh, uh, economic pieces of software out there, you know, that people are um, deciding to resist that, not to participate in that. And they're not doing it in the sort of the 60s uh, civil rights environmental movement uh, kind of march down the street fashion as much as just occupying reality, right? Actually being here now, as you might say, in, in, uh, in a more conscious way. And that's been, that's been really fun to see. And I feel like um, that's actually changing the world in, in, um, at least as powerful way as the 1960s did. But I guess what I what I keep coming to most is that um, of all the, the my cultural heroes who've passed away over the last decade or two, um, you're the one I miss. You know, I, I feel like, you know, Timothy Leary and Allen Ginsberg and and uh, William Burroughs and those sorts of folks are are with me with their books. You know, I've got their books and I feel like in some sense I have them. You know, I love them all dearly, but being with them was a challenge. You know, being with them in person sometimes um, it feels mean to say this, but I don't mean it in a mean way. But being with them in person often, um, you know, challenged my connection to their writing rather than augmented it. You know, and it took me time, certainly as a young man, to get through the idea that, well, these guys are your literary heroes, your poetic heroes, your, your intellectual heroes. They don't necessarily have to be your personal heroes, right? You don't have to model the way they live or the way they act. You can still get tremendous value out of their out of their work. And once you get through that, then you can appreciate them um, as people with all the same frailties as anybody. Um, but you were different, though. You know, yes, uh, you know, Cosmic Trigger changed my life. And uh, the, most particularly the idea of people living in different reality tunnels and how you can try them on and how we have to be flexible about that. And it's informed my work um, pretty much everything I write is informed by that, um, whether explicitly or implicitly. But um, when I think about the most profound uh, experiences I've had 
of you. It was, you know, when, when after I did that, you know, reading in like 1994 at Capitola Book Cafe, and you walk me back to your condo, you know, around the corner, and, you know, you had tea with Arlen, uh, and it was just, it was just Uncle Bob, you know, I, I feel like you're, um, a, a relative, in a sense, the relative I never had, um, but, you know, you're so human. You know, you 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 were I mean, you're something else now. I guess you you were so very human that the lesson to me was the the truth of humanism. You know that the most important thing to maintain is our humanity um, in the face of the machines, our humanity in the face of the institutions, our humanity in the face of economics. The the flesh and blood. I love you. You love me. Isn't this weird shit? Humanity. Um, and I feel like that's coming back. I feel like people are uh, getting a sense that what we have on this earth is time. Is time incarnate as people. And the object of the game is not to get out of this skin and somewhere else, but into this skin um, and really here and uh, whenever I was with you and whenever in a sense when I'm ever I'm with you now in your work and and thinking about you um, I am more in my body I'm more in my heart I am more in my soul and for that I thank you